Hey guys, welcome back to the show once again. Today we have a 2004 F-150 5.4 liter three valve engine that has a couple different noises going on under the hood. Now these are textbook examples of phaser knock and more importantly, I haven't covered this so far, phaser oscillation. So it's really good examples and I wanna let you guys hear them so you can check for yourself and see if you're having the same exact kind of noises on your engine and then you'll know exactly where it's coming from and what the fault is inside the engine. So let's go out for a test drive and check it out. Okay, so this right here is a phaser knock. You'll be able to hear it in your wheel wells. This one's pretty bad so I can hear it outside the vehicle also. Let's take a listen. Usually it's worse on the passenger side. All right, next we're gonna demonstrate phaser oscillation, which is a situation where you get, you put the vehicle in the drive and you start to take off light acceleration and the PCM actually actuates the VCT solenoids, which provides a pressurized oil to the, the phasers themselves and they come off that locked position in there. So now they're moving around in there a little bit, right? Well, your oil pressure is so low and your oil pressure is so inconsistent that they'll actually jump around in there and cause this rattle type knocking noise. Also, if the return spring on there is weak, it'll cause this also. Let's take a listen. Okay, so we're in park right now. We have our phaser knock and we're gonna put it into drive. Now, we're gonna give it a little bit of gas to actuate the BCT solenoids and get that phaser unlocked. And right there, I let off of it. The VCT solenoid turned off and went back to a locked position on there. Let's listen again. And over here you can see, when I give it a little bit of gas, the VCT solenoids come on. You see the duty cycle there of about 40%. I let off, they turn off, the noise goes away. Do it again. And these turn on around 900 RPMs or so. So you'll hear this most around 900 to 1200 RPMs. Okay, now just to give you a better understanding of where these noises are coming from, I pulled the phaser apart, pulled the backing plate off of here so we can look inside. Now, most of you probably already know where the phaser knock noise comes from. It's from the locking pin that goes right in this bore right here that locks the veins to the housing. So over time, it just wears out. You can see how shiny this one is. And of course, the housing wears out. And when it's sitting there locked at idle, it just kind of knocks in there. And this thing's ultra heavy, so it really resonates through the engine. And of course, this is directly bolted to the camshaft, so it makes one heck of a noise, as you've just heard. Now, phaser oscillation is something, you know, a little bit different. Um, what's happening with that is once the VCT solenoid applies pressurized oil to the phaser to start adjusting it and phasing the camshaft, this locking pin comes up and it unlocks, okay? So this is taken out of the equation at that point. What's happening with phaser oscillation is that your low oil, pr oil pressure or erratic oil pressure, especially the right-hand head, is causing the veins to go all over the place inside of here. So this thing's oscillating back and forth uncontrollably instead of being a nice, smooth operation and phasing of the cam, okay? Now, Ford took a couple steps to try to alleviate this. Of course, you want good oil pressure, that's number one, but what they did is they changed the design of the return spring on the outside of the phaser itself. So you can see this old design right here, the, the return spring is huge on here, but it has a few missing features. It's not as tightly wound, 
and it also doesn't have a anchor point over here keeping tension of where it anchors over here. So the new design, which you can see in this brand new latest and greatest phaser, you can see the spring is much smaller on there, but it's more tightly wound on there. Also, you can see over here where it anchors in to one of the pins. Just outside of that, there's another pin point on here that keeps that tension on the spring. So that's what they're trying to do, to trying to alleviate any kind of oscillation noise that may occur because the spring gets weak over time with heat cycles and stuff like that. So they're trying to make them last that much longer. So that's where all the noise is coming from on the inside of the phaser. Um, it's just, it's a complicated design and it has a lot of problems to it, but the latest design from Ford, this one right here, uh, tries to alleviate most of that. And the, like I said, the biggest fix for this is to have your upgraded oil pump and to use 5W30, it's gonna protect it and allow it to operate that much better. Now, of course, the proper fix for this is to replace the entire timing chain set. You want new chains, sprockets, guides, tensioners, phasers, and VCT solenoids, okay? And that's gonna bring the, the whole VCT system back to like new status. There's a lot of later updated parts for this engine, um, and it's gonna bring it back to like new status. You also wanna change your oil pump out to the Melly M360 or the Melly M10340 oil pump so we can get the proper pressure and oil volume up to each one of those cylinder heads so again, the VCT system can work properly. Now, speaking of oil pressure, I wanna talk about oil weight. The, these engines require 5W20 according to Ford, but the same engine is used in other countries like I think Brazil and Australia, and they spec out 5W30 down there. And they don't have these VCT problems, okay? These kind of wear problems, especially in the phasers, because they're using the 5W30. Now, the reason Ford spec'd out 5W20 up in the United States here is because they have to uh, adhere to the CAFE standards. They want to increase their corporate average fuel economy, so they drop the weight of the oil, increase their fuel economy of the trucks and the cars, and guess what? They're within specs with the government, and everything's copacetic, okay? So you want to change all those components out, make your engine like new once again, maintain it from there, use that 5W30 from then on out, and you have a nice happy engine and a great running truck once again, plenty of power. You'll notice there's a lot more power because it's timed properly now um, and all of that. I have a whole four part series showing you in detail on how to do this with links to the kit from Ford. Okay, there's a full kit from Ford. You want to use only Ford components. You use aftermarket components, you're going to have problems in as little as three to 5,000 miles. It's not worth it. The kit that I link to on Amazon is ultra cheap compared to going directly to the dealer. So, I hope this helped you guys out just a little bit, hearing those noises and learning exactly where they're coming from, uh, so you can identify if that's your concern on your vehicle or not. And of course, I'll put links to everything down below. I'll see you next time.